and I'm Maeve, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, Nico and Tucker attended the Bernie Sanders rally in New Hampshire. Deep Dive investigated the BMX biking scene in Northampton. Let's Talk Discuss Black History Month. Hamped Up sat down with the boys basketball team. And the Nacho Show welcomed some new guests. Tune in until the end of the episode for some important updates. Senator Bernie Sanders tied with Mayor Pete Buttigieg in Tuesday's New Hampshire primary. Sanders said this was the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. Andrew Yang also dropped out of the presidential race. The World Health Organization has come up with a new name for the coronavirus, COVID-19, standing for Coronavirus 2019. The abbreviation was made to avoid stigma. Roger Stone, who is convicted of witness tampering and other offenses surrounding the Robert Mueller investigation, is now being legally protected by General Barr. Trump congratulated Barr for taking control. Former troops that helped clean up a nuclear explosion in Spain in 1966 have successfully been able to sue the federal government for health benefits. Death records show that Kobe Bryant and his daughter have been laid to rest in a cemetery near the Pacific Coast. It's February 10th, 2020. I'm Nika Mistrangelo with a special report from a Bernie Sanders rally with special guests, The Strokes, in Durham, New Hampshire. Let's see what's going on here tonight. What about this rally is unique to you from other types of rallies? I mean, look at this line. It's absolutely bonkers. It's all around. It's as far as you can see. I mean, the only candidates I've ever seen win in my life, the 29 years that I've been alive, have been candidates who have been able to rally young, excited people. Um, well, I love the Strokes, first of all, and I love Bernie Sanders, and I back him so hard, and it, this is just so much fun. Perfect, perfect night. What brings you here to the rally tonight? Uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, specifically, uh, I'm a big fan of his politics and his policies, so that, uh, I don't really care about the strokes, to be honest. Um, I think uh, music has always been a great part of, uh, of rallies. Um, usually it's a lot shorter and sweeter, but so I'm really good that they're getting a complete set in, most definitely. What do you see in Bernie Sanders that can really help the young people of America? Damn, that's a great question. A future, to be honest. In terms of like culture online, he's become kind of a meme. The fact that he's is uh, combating climate change is something that more young people are more focused on. So I think that's kind of bringing us together. And he's one of the only candidates that actually has a plan that might be good enough. He uses Twitter and like social media to like combat Trump in the perfect way that like gets young people interested in in it and he got, has like a perfect platform for young people I think. He's a meme but it gets his platform out there and it gets people talking about him and I feel like a lot of more people have looked into his campaign and looked into him as a candidate because of that. I think he really like doesn't give a an MF you know like he says I mean not in the Trump way where it's like he says Blah, 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 blah. But I think he like actually believes in what he says because he supported that for years if you look at his track record. So I think he just has a way of getting young people really, really excited and really, really excited to get involved as well in politics. So that was the Bernie Sanders Strokes Rally. Uh, we learned a lot of infra interesting things and the atmosphere was exceptionally exciting. I would honestly be shocked if he loses tomorrow's primary, but we'll keep you guys updated on that. Thanks so much for coming along for the trip and see you next week on The Transcript. Hi, I'm Gus. Welcome to Deep Dive. BMX, which stands for Bicycle Motocross, started as racing in the early 1970s, but has evolved into a freestyle sport where participants can show their creativity in the form of an action sport. There are competitions such as X Games and Red Bull sponsored events. Some riders get sponsored by BMX companies and get free bikes and even salaries. 
This week, we sat down with Jason Graves, Full Circle Bike Shop owner, to learn more about the local BMX community. Hey, my name is Jason Graves and I own Full Circle Bike Shop in Florence, Mass. I've been in the bike business my whole life, but I've owned the shop for 13 years. And we sell all sorts of bikes, but we mostly sell BMX bikes. When I opened the shop in 2007, there was a lack of BMX, and as soon as I opened it, I instantly saw the numbers grow. So I think we've had an impact right from day one. Uh, we do BMX camps uh, in the summertime. Um, it's a week-long day camp at our house up in Worthington. And it's from nine to four, and we dig in the dirt and ride bikes in the dirt all day long. I opened the shop strictly selling BMX because that's all I wanted to do but I quickly learned that I needed to expand a little bit more because parents were coming in looking for mountain bikes and things like that. So we've always sold them in the background, but it's just recently that we've started to push it a little bit more. We also talked with Maddox McPherson and Logan Demersky, local BMX riders. I'm Logan Demersky and I've been riding bikes since I was nine years old. My name's Maddox McPherson. I've been riding BMX for about two years now. I started racing when I was nine years old and I'm nationally ranked 12 right now in the country for BMX racing. I got into BMX because road cost is really expensive and a lot of my friends are getting into it and it's just the other option. I bought a used BMX bike about two years ago and I've been riding BMX ever since. Um, I used to race for a team called Overhaul Racing and I was on the team for about three and a half years. and. I did a lot of nationals with that team and now I'm racing for Full Circle Bike Shop. Much better decision. Just more of like a friendly environment and local based. I'm still doing nationals though. The local BMX scene has been improving since I first got here two years ago. Uh, at first there was very few people riding and now there's just been more and more since then. If you're trying to get into BMX, try to ride every day, stay local and support your local bike shop. The local bike shop Full Circle has really kept the BMX community around here alive, just helping all the local riders out when something breaks or when they don't know how to work on their bike like most people don't. To new riders, I would tell them just keep on supporting your local bike shop because they're the people keeping the community around here alive and they're just really helping you like whenever you need new parts or something on your bike breaks or anything really, they're always there to give advice. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Deep Dive. Hi, I'm Katie. February is Black History Month, a celebration of African American achievements and roles in history. In 1926, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, or ASNLH, sponsored Negro History Week. It was meant to promote schools and communities to hold local celebrations and host performances and lectures. The call to awareness had students forming black history clubs, teachers seeking more black history material to teach, and a general positive response from the public. The civil rights movement of the 1960s led Negro History Week to be Black History Month, starting mainly on college campuses. In 1976, President Gerald Ford officialized it, inspiring people to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. The president maintains February as Black History Month every year, and the ASNLH still continues to promote black history studies. I talked to Amina Mekelsam, the co-leader of Students of Color Alliance at NHS. My name is Amina Mekelsam, and I'm the co-leader of the Students of Color Alliance, or Ahsoka, along with Pearl Shred. Our main objectives are to kind of create change around race within the school and also to create like a community within our meetings for students of color to come and just like feel comfortable and safe and hang out with other people of color. Black History Month is this month. The purpose of it is really to recognize um, black history and black struggle and accomplishments um, and also to recognize like the state of race in our nation today. A lot of people think it's more historical and like, I don't know, like you have to learn about people in the civil rights movement and then you're kind of done. But I think really Black History Month is also about learning about activists today and learning about like issues of race today and not just historical stuff. So let's talk. What does Black History Month mean to you? Let us know on at Devil's Advocate NHS on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Hamped Up.
The Dust Bowl was not as dry as this year's boys varsity basketball team. The varsity boys basketball team has faced many difficulties this year, including a rough Division I schedule, resulting in a 5-12 and record. We sat down with players from varsity, JV, and the almost undefeated freshman team to ask them about their experience going through the program. I feel like being on JV has helped because I'm getting some good minutes and like it's like good competition. I feel like on freshman, I wouldn't get like as good competition as JV. And I feel like on varsity, I wouldn't play as much, so like I wouldn't experience and like, yeah. I mostly like to play friendship freshman because I'm with all my friends. And it'd be nice to be on JV for the competition, but it's all about having fun, so. I'd like to be on varsity next year. I also like to be on varsity, but as long as I get to play, it's fun. Well, I play AAU, so like I have I play like all year round, so like I'll be earning for sure. Um, I was thinking about playing AAU, but I play baseball instead. But there is like a spring league for the high school now, which I think I'm gonna try to play. Going from eighth grade to varsity was like it was hard because like. I went from playing against kids that are like really small to like 18 year olds. It was like, it was hard, but I got used to it through the season. Freshman compared to varsity, there's definitely a big difference, you know, going against like smaller guys and the competition not being so good to, um, I guess, going against, you know, a lot bigger competition. I feel like even though our record says otherwise, we kind of play, uh, I guess, more together than we did last year, where we all kind of know each other more, and you know, we're all we're, we're all friends there. Yeah. We also talked to Jack Shaughnessy, a Northampton High School alum who played four years of basketball in the Blue Devils program. As a freshman, Jack was on the freshman team, and as a sophomore, he was on JV and earned a call up to varsity for playoffs. From then on, he completed two full years of varsity under Coach Harp. It was helpful because I got to see where I was as a player my first year as a freshman. Then I got to improve for the next year on JV where we really worked on our developing our skills for the varsity level. It also really gives you the perspective on how tough it is to be competitive and contenders at the varsity level. Girls basketball won their game last Friday against Holyoke 61-40 to and beat West Springfield 54-23 to on Tuesday. Boys basketball beat Pope Francis on Monday 66-40. to Girls and boys swimming finished their season last weekend at Western Mass. Boys and girls indoor track are both Division I Western Mass champions as of last Friday. Indoor track has Division IV states tomorrow in Boston. Girls basketball plays Amherst tonight in the gym at 7. Hi, I'm Lucas Lang, and welcome to the Nacho Show. Today I'm joined by... Chance Asbornson. Zev here and on Donnie. So for people that don't know who you are, I'm just going to ask you a few random questions so they can get a better sense about you. What's your dream job? A postal carrier? Doesn't seem that bad to me. Chance. I don't know, being a dog walker. Walking people's dogs and getting paid for it. I walk your dog. He does walk my dog. So now we're going to kick it up a notch. Ghost pepper and blueberry. So, the Oscars were on last Sunday. Did any of you watch? Nope. Nope. Great. Have you watched any of the winning movies, which include uh, Parasite, Joker, 1917, Ford vs. Ferrari, Toy Story 4, Rocket <laughs> Man, and oh, so on? I gotta on. clean up my f***ing pants. Yeah, it's... <laughs> okay, so now we're moving on to the next session. section. Next Sash? Next, yeah, but also the next section. Total insanity. Our hot topic this week are conspiracy theories. So I'm just gonna give you a bunch of conspiracy theories and you're gonna tell me if they're if you think they're real or not and you're gonna tell me why. Do you think the moon landing was real? Why is my ear burning? It was filmed simply because the evidence piles up. The evidence is just there. I can't go into great detail, but the moon landing was fake. I disagree with that statement, you unpatriotic scum. Dude, I'm sweating balls. <laughs> I just don't want another. Scorpion pepper hot sauce. 
All right, Chance. Millions of people, millions of people claim they have <laughs> seen UFOs at extraterrestrial. <laughs> my, my thoughts is that the only thing out there Wait, are, we doing are my <laughs> are my taste buds because they are out of this world right now, bro. <laughs> moving on. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> oh God. The Black Mamba Six Hot Sauce. Is this about to be hot as hell? Like, oh yeah. All right. Give me milk on standby. It has no taste. It's just spice. Yeah. See you next time, and have a great break. Oh, oh my. <coughs> that was all for this week's episode. The Right Flight program is now accepting new participants ages 16 and over. More information can be found in guidance. Come to our student union meetings the second and fourth Wednesday of every month at 6.30 in the library. Feel free to fill out our grant form if your student club or project needs funding. Have a, Have a great, great February, February break. break.